like pillars around it. Mm -hmm. There's something on the pillars like greenery or lighting or something. Look at yourself. Do you feel like you have a body? Uh, yes. Look down at your feet. How many toes do you have? It looks like human feet. Look at your hands. How many fingers do you have? Yeah, human hands. How about your skin tone? What color is it? Very fair. Are you wearing any clothing? Hmm. Some sort of very, very thin fabric. Some sort of dress, but it's like the thinnest of fabrics. It's like barely there. As far as jewelry, are you wearing any jewelry? Something around my neck and something on my head. Describe what it is that is on your head and your neck. What does that look like? You're able to see, sense, feel, hear everything very clearly, very clearly now. What is it? On my head, it's some sort of tiara type thing in gold. And it has a large green crystal. And then, oh, the I'm wearing, it's like a gold chain around my neck with a crystal pendant. And it's some type of large purple crystal. And I'm also wearing um, like bangles, bracelets, also of purple crystal. Is there anything you're carrying? Yeah, it's like a staff, a gold staff. No, it's like wooden, but it has, hmm, it has a gold cap thing on it with more crystals. It's like a very large crystal, I think green crystal set in gold. You're able to communicate to the different crystals that you have on you, whether it's in this piece that you're carrying or the jewelry. Which crystal do you feel that would like to give you a message? Which one stands out the most? The one around my neck. Okay. Let's go ahead and connect to that consciousness there within the crystal. Let's connect to it now. Ask it. Does it have any messages for you? Yes, it says it's calling to me. It's moving me to the place of energy. This is, from my perspective, of course, it's now exists in the now but from my perspective this is a future and the crystal is calling me into that energy mm -hmm. go ahead and follow it listen to it what would you like to do next there's a building in front of us that i want to see tell me about this building what does it look like i'm not quite sure i see the shape of the building but it has very tall doors with like a round gold um, disc etched into the door. And like when, as you go in the building, it's like you're stepping into the, it's very large, it's larger than human, but you're like stepping into the, the gold, through this gold um, circle that's, that's on the door. Mm -hmm. And it's symbolizing the, not our sun, but the galactic sun. Very good. Beautiful. Keep adventuring through this building you've entered into. Let me know what you see next that stands out. Where do you want to go with it? It's some sort of temple. And it's, it's lit up inside. It's, uh, it's like gold gold flake all over the walls it's very gold and there's mm, it's it's like um it's round the inside is round and around near the walls are like large bowls like stone bowls some sort of stone or crystal a very large bowl that's like held up on a pedestal also of like stone or crystal and then in each of these like bowls there's like several of them around the room there's there's Chris, different crystals in each of them and then in each of these bowls like with the crystals in them there's emanating a flame 
and depending on whatever crystal is in that particular bowl is a different color flame. And it's like the this temple is connected to the galactic sun energy. It's sort of, uh, you could call it our power plant, um, but of course a much more advanced energy and power plant than what you use as as your as your human time is very advanced um, is con connecting to the galactic sun and drawing those energies and then those energies um, because it's the galactic sun and it's such a wide frequency range the the crystals are how to explain are taking the certain frequency of that from that range that's in harmony with those particular crystals. And so it's, uh, you could say purifying, it's isolate, isolating would be a better word, isolating that particular frequency from all the rest of the frequency of the galactic sun. And so each of the frequencies is isolated depending on which crystal is pulling in the energy. So this is a sort of power plant that we use. And then we use these different energies um, for various purposes. Each energy, each frequency has different applications. Beautiful, thank you. Go ahead and let's see, let's put it into action, what you're speaking of. Let's see if you're able to put this into action. Tell me what, what is it that you're doing to put it into action? The most important thing is your intention. We can draw down the, we know how to draw down the energy of the galactic sun. So as we stand in the center of these crystals, of these, of these bowls of crystals, I, there's a, above me, like the atrium is clear. Mm, it's like an opening. I'm trying to see if it's, covered in some sort of clear glass or if it's completely open. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but either way, the sun is able, the energy of the galactic sun is some sort of white crystal. It's like totally clear crystal, actually. It's some sort of quartz. And the galactic sun, um, I stand in the center and using the intention of my staff and the crystals on me that I'm wearing, I pull in the energy of the galactic sun. And with my intention, um, I know how to direct it into the various bowls of crystals. And then this energy is sent to whatever part of the city is requiring that energy, whatever I, the need is, whatever the requirement is. And we have some mechanism that once I bring in the intention and bring in the, the energy of the galactic sun, um, it's maintained. So I don't have to keep standing there, you know, to make it work. Uh, we have some sort of mechanism that once I set it with my intention, it maintains that, that intention until I go and change it again, if I so choose. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Are there any others doing this besides you in this location? Mm, there are others who know how to do it. We've taught them how. Um, me and my husband know how to do it. And he's the one who helped set this structure up and designed it, of course. Um, so, of course, he knows how also. He sets up the structures. And then I am the one who brings in the intention and move, helps move the energy. Um, there are others that we teach how to do this. It takes somebody with a very pure focus and, and intent. Not everybody is able to do it. I mean, they. I, I should say everybody could do it, but not everybody really wants to or <laughs> you know, chooses to um, have that kind of focus. Uh, they're busy with other things. They're, passions are other things so it's it's not like a lot of us but it is enough people that enjoy 
uniting with this kind of energy and moving it and watching it move. So there are others. It's not just me who knows how to do this. And what is the purpose of, of, of doing this? Why, why, is, why is there a need for this? What, what is it when you're working with these energies? What does it do to whatever it is that you're focusing on? Well, the intention is to power our city, but um, the energies are also are harmonizing. Um, they maintain a natural harmony within nature. And we can use it, we can use these energies to maintain uh, spheres or zones of focus and intent of, of certain energies, like say uh, in our universities or places of learning, uh, we can direct an energy there, which helps people maintain the frequency of mind, uh, which is suitable for learning. Or there's meditation centers where they go and I say meditation, but I, I think our meditation concept is probably very different than, than perhaps your time was. In these centers, we travel the, the dimensions, we astral travel, we explore our own consciousness, we explore the possibilities of source, of what is possible. And so we have these kind of centers also which are having energy directed the, to them in order to maintain that frequency of ease in order to um, easily do that type of work. And then there's other energies which you know, are directed to people's homes and that they can, they have the ability to, to adjust it. Um, like if, if they want to have a time of rest, they can put restful frequencies into their home, um, or they can have a space with no energy frequency, like with like all the galactic sun, you know, because the galactic sun is always shining. So that is always, it is source energy. So that's always there. So um, the people in the homes also have the ability to just, like you could say, turn off. <laughs> the settings of of the power plant and just accept all the you know just completely natural galactic sun frequencies so it's really what however is people choose and of course the usual power plant activities of lighting and heat and anything for which you would say energy is required in your world you know of course we don't have all the same requirements as you do, uh, but we do have some stuff. We have our transportation modes. We have our temperature control modes. And uh, we also can choose to control the weather and control the frequency in which things grow, which plants grow. And so we, we can control any of the other energy any of the energies of our planet, we, we have that ability. Beautiful. Okay. Anything else you want to share within the space of what you can do? Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing that there's water. Water is an important component of the system. And there's a very advanced understanding, not just us who run the power plant, but there's a very advanced understanding in the general population of the consciousness of water and how and how to use that to our you know to our uh, you could say advantage of evolution wonderful anything else that you haven't mentioned that would be important to share about some of the other ways that you assist with this energy within your planet uh it serves to maintain the health and harmony of the human and mm -hmm. of you know uh, and of other you know living organisms and entities within our within our planet um actually we don't only have humans but there are, we have other galactic visitors as well um but the energies that we send out make it very easy for the person to maintain a frequency of health 
um, and harmony so that, you know, when you're in a state of harmony within your own being, in a state of health and wellness, you, you know, naturally interact uh, in healthy ways with other beings. And so these frequencies also age in that. And so there's these energies are, uh, our medical system is very different than what you would say in your time. Um, but we do have healers for on those occasions, we would need them. But for the most part, our population is healthy and has a good understanding of how to maintain that within themselves. Beautiful. So therefore, so you connect to source, you know, sun from within that space that then um, seems like it balances out your planet. And let's see if I have any questions on that. When it goes into and um, replenishes, say, your planetary ecosystem or overall system, does it also go into all of you as well in replenishing your energies? Uh, yes. Um, we find that we don't need to sleep. We don't need to eat. Uh, although there are those that choose to. Uh, and we can take periods of what would from the outside be looking like rest. Um, but mostly that's going inward into a deep meditation. Because we are at a higher consciousness, uh, our dream state is very different like we don't wake up from our dreams because we have not lost the awareness of them. We are always still aware of them. So we remain with that level of conscious awareness as we move into what you would have called dream states uh, or periods of rest. And we, for the most part, know how to draw down the energy of source, the source within us, in order to power our own bodies. Um, like I said, there are still some who choose to consume food uh, just for the pleasure, for the enjoyment. Um, but it's not like physically necessary. We know how to draw on the energies in such a way that they don't have to, that they don't actually have to do that unless they want to. But in general, our, our society is very, it has a very high level of, of conscious awareness. And so, yes, we know how to work with the energies of source and of the galactic sun and of our human bodies and how to uh, maintain a complete consciousness and awareness of what our bodies are physically doing, our cells within us, our muscles, our DNA. Uh, all our composition, we have a conscious awareness of, of the inner workings of, of our body. It's not an unconscious thing. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. You also mentioned that this was like um, her, say, future self. Can you yes. explain that further? What did you mean by that? Uh, it says she moves into the next dimension. It's her lifetime now, actually but in her perfected state, in her ascended state. Wonderful. It's the future of her current lifetime as she continues her ascension. Beautiful. And you also mentioned about her twin flame and how he does this work as well. Yes, um, yes. This twin flame that you mentioned, is this? Yes. Okay. Um, and is there within this space as we're talking to you now? Uh, yes, he's here. Okay. Um, would you allow for him to connect so that he's able to give any messages that he's that he would like to? Uh, yes, he has my permission. You can ask his. Beautiful. Thank you. We would like to speak to her, to inflame there within the space, this future self of her. Would you allow for us to speak to you? Yes. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We love you, honor you, and respect you. Thank you for bringing her to us as well today. This um, beautiful planetary sphere it sounds um, so uh, balanced and healing and um, very, you know, um, activating, especially within realizing how the ecosystem as, you know, the, the central sun and all these um, different elements that she was speaking of and crystals, how they connect and assist us profoundly. 
Do you have any messages for, for us? Uh, yes, it's what I've been working for all my life. The use of energies in perfect harmony and balance with nature and in perfect harmony and, and balance with the human entity is what I'm working towards still. And this is very within reach. This is within reach of, of humans. Uh, I see that future for us, and I visit it frequently because this, as you know, there is no time. And so I'm able to step in and out of this dimension <clears throat> and draw those ideas into my time. But it's still a collective effort in order to achieve this because, uh, as you know, time does not exist, and that is one possibility, uh, but humans can go in all manner of directions. It's simply depending on their choice. And so I'm working with in helping the people of her time to harmonize with this, the timeline in which the state of, of harmony is achieved. And I'm working with the people in my time so that we can also achieve this and move into this frequency, move into this highest timeline for ourselves of what's possible and allow all the lower possibilities to simply dissolve. So we are shifting into the highest possibility of what is possible as humans in harmony with the energy around us. Does this planet that you're showing us a glimpse of from say the future self of her, does it have any connection to earth or I'm wondering what you mean by all that you just said? Yes, it is earth. Uh, but it, it is earth in its ascended state. It is the higher dimension of earth, but it is your earth. It is your planet. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> we know um, how important the sun is to us in this time and space. Um, so it's uh, wonderful to see how it's being used so organically and fluent within your time and space. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Would you like to take us through the journey of how it is that your plan, um, yours or our planet, say, transformed into what it is now? Would you like to take us to that back in time and space? Yes, I began? would. Yes, yes. If you yes. can do that now, if we'd like to go back, back, right, perhaps uh, wherever in time and space in our earth time before this beautiful transformation has happened, where it is important for us to see where they are there. We are there now. We are there now. If you could both communicate and share with us what is going on within earth right before this um, transformation. The most important thing to realize is the power of the choice that the human has the power of choice to align with their highest selves or with lower vibrations of themselves. They have the choice to shed all the illusions of being held back. They have the power of choice to release any negativity or any what is perceived as negative entities from their being. They can choose to release that and move into their highest self and embody their highest self. So it was a great collective effort. So it is not anything that any one individual has done. It was a collective choice of the collective to shift into a higher perspective, to shift into a higher consciousness and awareness and to leave behind the perceptions of control, the delusions of, of being trapped because we are powerful, we are source and we are the ones who control our destiny and we don't have to allow any energies which do not control us, we don't have to allow them to. And so in her timeline is working through and she has to a great extent released any of those energies which are which were in disharmony with herself. And she is embodying more and more her highest self and releasing anything which is not her from her reality. And I too have gone through this process 
of releasing anything which is not in harmony with my true highest self. And then on, on an individual basis, other humans are doing this as well. And as we are source, from the perspective of the individual, it is their reality, which only is what truly exists. And so once they release themselves from feelings of entrapment, feelings of, of lack, of poverty, of, of systems which control, once they can release themselves from this and move into a higher perspective where they are truly free, the freedom is to create their reality. The freedom is not to run or flee or escape from others. Rather, to step into the knowing that you create and choose your own reality. And so you can create and choose a reality in which you are completely free to manifest your hopes and dreams. And this is what I've done in my time. And it has taken many, many life streams of mine as in order to make this, this, um, this possibility. I had to work through many, many other lower timelines in order to finally, finally pull from those lower timelines. Each timeline would produce a, an energy that was, you know, had a certain harmony with my highest self. So each time I would go through a timeline, of course, it all happens consecutive or concurrently. Everything's happening concurrently as the soul evolves because there's no time. Uh, but in this evolution of these multiple, multiple timelines, I was working towards greater, greater harmony with myself and freeing myself from the illusion of being held back in my creative potential. And so now I am in a, existing in a timeline in which I am not held back and I'm able to work in harmony with the people around me to bring about my energetic devices. <clears throat> and now as they also have shifted into their higher timelines because I've been pulling that energy in to me and to my time, the others are also feeling it, that I'm pulling them into the higher reality in which I've created. And so they too, are releasing themselves from the need to control others, the need to, to manipulate, the need to, to be stuck. Anything which pulls their energy away from the energy of their creating their higher reality, they have also released along with me. It's been a process and we're still going through it in my time perspective. Of course, like I said, I can jump back and forth and I can see the whole progression. And so as I pull in the energy of ascension, it's not just me, but those also within my reality that are also pulled into this energy of ascension, which is truly the energy of our soul, our, of our source self, which is our true soul blueprint as humans in their perfected and perfected in their state of perfection and I'm pulling in that energy and others are experiencing it within my reality. And so this time I know how to work with them. I'm learning how to work with them on a higher vibration. And they too are starting to see the perspective of what's possible. And they too are working in harmony with me to make it possible. And so by the time from a linear time perspective, from my time back here where I am, by the time that this progresses to future time, uh, this highest timeline is already there. And she is simply stepping into it. And likewise, other humans are simply stepping into this higher timeline, this highest timeline, which we in your perceived past have created. And so it goes on back, 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 back to all what you perceive as past, although, as I said, it's all happening at once. Uh, but what you perceive as past, all your soul parts are moving into this highest timeline. 
And so by your individual choices and the collective choice to move into this highest timeline of your highest creative potential, where you can create your highest dreams and your highest potential as directed by your soul source, unencumbered by the illusion of entrapment and lack. And so now you are feel, now you are free to create your highest potential. And by this means, by the power of human choice, we have shifted into this higher timeline, into this highest possibility. And of course, with my knowledge, I'm able to help others understand the mechanisms of that power plant, which is in your perceived future. And I'm able to educate them and teach others how to utilize the energy in the universe to make it happen. But um, it also takes their free will and free choice to choose that highest reality for themselves. So that instead of, instead of choosing to do damaging things to the earth uh, by digging into the earth and injecting chemicals with fracking and all the other damaging things that they, they think that they're stuck because they think that they don't have other options. I'm helping them see that they have other options and that this does not make, mm, this does not impoverish them, but rather it brings them to a higher level of wealth. And as it lifts up all the humans, it helps us all be wealthier and uh, because that was one of the biggest concerns was the concern over money, over wealth, over prestige and power. And I'm helping them see that, that stepping into this higher timeline possibility does not cause poverty for themselves, but rather it opens up new opportunities to create abundance for themselves and to allow the abundance of others because as as they can now see and as they're beginning to perceive the abundance of others only adds to the abundance of them because when we all are abundant when we all shift to a higher vibration entire timeline it serves to raise all of us up there is no need for lack or control, systems of control, or holding anybody back in order to advance ourselves. This illusion of needing to step on the heads of others in order to progress ourselves. This was an illusion that we are starting to dissolve in my time, that I'm helping others see that there's a different possibility, there's a different way of looking at it. And so because they're able to shift their perspective, they're able to make a different choice. And that choice, which is now in alignment with the highest timeline and that highest timeline, moving into the highest future possibility, which I told you about. Wow, amazing. That's such a wonderful uh, knowledge and such a cl uh, clearness of, say, um, wisdom for a most organic path for creating our most positive ascension. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Now you explained the choices. So now we've also, you've also gone back to right before say um, the ascension uh, process. Uh, what does that look like ascension process on earth? The shifting, the transformation that evolves the earth into what you are now. The ascension as you know, you are source. You are one perspective of source. So everything that you perceive as external to you truly is within you. And so the ascension begins within yourself. And when you're able within yourself to start to shift your perspective, when, you're, when you feel as a soul on a soul level, that you have completed your ex examination and your exploration of all the possibilities of which are possible for your soul and you have and you are satisfied 
with what you have learned from all your perspectives of all your lives, of all your timelines, uh, for even within the life that you're living now, there are multiple timelines, multiple streams of life streams, even within your life that you're living as Aurora, you can simply move back and forth into your timelines as you choose. And you two are dissolving timelines, which you do not want in your, uh, in your ascension path. Mm -hmm. So ascension is dissolving those, I say timelines, but you know, everything is really, it's simply a perspective. It's simply a mind of God. It's an exercise in the mind of God. Uh, so when I say that we create our reality, we create it in a very real way. We are a unique perspective of source as, an, as each individual. And so when our perspective as source, as that clarified, individualized, fractalized piece of source from our unique perspective, uh, and we have completely examined all the options, all the possibilities of that unique little piece of source. And we have done our job, you could say, as that perspective of source to examine all the little, all the possibilities within our corner of the universe, within our corner of the mind of God within source. And we bring all that energy back to source and we integrate it into back into ourselves, into source, and then from source back into ourselves as individual fractals. And now from our source perspective of all the possibilities which we just explored, we are able to say, oh, okay, of all the possibilities, I most enjoyed the frequency of this possibility, of this timeline, of this life stream. So this is the path that I choose to follow. This is the path that I now choose to continue to create my reality. And I will simply allow all the others to dissolve away. I've learned what I can from them. And now I can simply allow them to dissolve away. And I will maintain the vibration of my creation in this particular highest reality, which I have now chosen for myself. And... So now I am on this highest timeline possibly and in the frequency of creation. So as a fractal of source, now I am within that energy of creation. I can create my highest reality. And so I am creating the highest reality for myself. You could call this the ascension because I have left behind all the distortions, all the lower possibilities, all the lower frequencies, which I do not wish to continue on in my new highest reality, which I'm creating. So you could call this itself a form of ascension because I'm leaving behind everything which I do not choose. And I am choosing what from my source perspective is the highest good, the highest potential for my individual soul self. And from this point, I will choose to create. And from this point, I can create whatever I choose. I can create universes. I can create worlds. I can create my reality however I choose to do. And so ascension is stepping into your God self as source and claiming your power as the creator being, as your God self to create your reality, however you choose to create your reality. And so you are pulling in what you would call experiences, but really it was simply explorations within the mind of God, which of course in your ability as God uh, feels fully physical, feels what you would perceive as real, but we know that it is all energy. We know that it is all directing energy in certain mind thoughts, patterns. And so now as this creator being that you have become after you have completely explored all the possibilities of who you could become, 
you are saying, I want to be this. This is what I want to be. This is the reality that I choose to create. I choose, and I do choose in my reality, I choose to create from a place of love and harmony and of peace and of, of passion and a place where, where people and any living entities within my reality are able to also create from their place of passion and love and joy. And so this place, this reality, which I have created, this is a new earth for myself. And so collectively, we can step into this energy and ascend together. And it appears to be collective, but in a way, it is our individual fractalized identity, our individualized self, which is ascending. And because we are sending out that energy from ourselves and we create our whole perspective of reality, we bring the whole reality with us. So if we ascend as a creator being, then all our creation also ascends. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. I love I love the explanation of how it's so empowers empowering how how much we are um, such the wielder and the creator of our own experience and, and really that's um, it's amazing it's aligned so much beautifully with what we've been talking about you know all 2020 is to um, you know release and let go of things that I mean no, no longer served us for for our highest potential and when you do that how it can bring such a beautiful fruition of what you really want and or what needs, to, what organically is meant to be uh, manifesting and creating in your life now. So you choose that path. You choose to either walk that, say, inorganic, artificial path, or, or you choose to walk, walk the organic path and fully believe it in your full divine empowerment. Thank you. For yes. That. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anything else uh, you would like to add for us? I know uh, specifically I would like to ask all that you said is in great alignment and what we talk about and teach. Now, um, however, there is still those people, for example, that still feel like, you know, they might have people in their life that are still unawakened and are still controlled or perhaps are being, you know, are following what the, uh, the false agenda is on earth right now um, and, and, you know, living in fear. Now, there's people that will understand this and choose not to live that path of fear and, um, you know, will choose to rise from it and not be that in that false path of artificial inorganic, right? And then there's people yes. who are trying to bridge out of it and, you know, they're having a hard time bridging out of it. Um, I know you, all the advice that you gave, but specifically on people who are holding on to this fear, is there anything you can tell them about how to finally bridge out of it? Yes. And to appreciate the, the role that they serve in their soul mission, uh, they, we can think of it as that part of our soul, which has explored the lower possibilities. And so that part of our soul, which is exploring that path, which ultimately, um, you know, when they achieve in their future, uh, they'll, they'll see that, oh, that's actually not the path that I want to choose. Um, but from the perspective that you're looking and seeing them now, uh, they are in the lower vibration. And so in order to call them out of that and help them in their evolution, uh, it's useful to understand that that person who from our, from our view is lost or is uh, in a state of fear, in a vibration of an energy, which we know is not for their highest good um, in terms of aligning with their highest self. Uh, of course, like I said, it does serve a purpose in that it has allowed our soul to explore that path and bring knowledge of that path back to us. But of course, the ultimate goal is to shift the entirety of our soul into a higher vibration. Uh, and so we do want to call those, those uh, people 
who are in a state of fear or confusion or sadness or any vibration which we know is a perception of suffering or entrapment or enslavement. All these are energies that the soul will work through. And so it helps to realize that even their higher self, their ascended self, exists as well within the same plane because there is no time. And so we all exist together and they can simply, mm, of course it sounds simple from the higher self perspective. So let me, let me think of how to say it from a perspective of the part of the soul that is trapped. Mm, give me just a moment. Let me think how yes. to phrase this. Okay. Okay. So useful for those people are the physical tools of, of healing. You could say even your doctors can help shift them, but I'm not talking about just medical doctors and that type of healing so much as since the person is stuck in the physical, in what they perceive as physical enslavement or fear or, or these type of energies, uh, what's useful for them is to have some sort of physical object has a black stone which she uses when she feels um, an energy of fear or uh, uncomfortable energy within herself uh, she uses a black stone to call on and this stone becomes a physical anchor to pull those those discordant energies out of her and then she calls on the energy of her higher self to shift into her um, because when you when you send out when you release i should say when you release energy from you uh, what you're truly doing is you are pulling in your higher self and and harmonizing your energy more to be more in alignment with your higher self um, but it helps those in a state of fear to have some sort of object um, or, or elixir, like say a comforting tea. And so when they're in a state of, of fear, they can drink a special herbal tea, which they have prepared, which in their physical perception helps them calm their nerves. Um, basically anything which soothes them, which helps them uh, bring in an energy of harmony, which helps them bring in an energy of love. Uh, and it can be really any simple thing, like a picture of a loved one or an interaction with a loved pet. Really, uh, humans tend to make things very complicated, um, but really it's the simple, simple things. Every, every choice that you make to choose to interact with a loved pet and to bring in that loving energy or to drink your herbal tea and bring in that soothing calm energy or to interact with the crystal and bring in a certain harmonizing frequency which you want to call into yourself. Uh, it can be these simple steps, but the choice is the choice point. In every single moment that person can choose that, okay, do I want to dwell in this energy of fear or would I like to shift for to a more peaceful place? Um, of course, it's purely their choice. And oftentimes a soul can and does choose to spend more time exploring a place of fear or a frequency of hate or a frequency of of lack, of poverty, of, of, of strife. So souls have the choice to continue to explore that energy. Of course, that's always their choice. Um, however, uh, as you can encourage them that they don't have to park there. They don't have to live in that constant state. Uh, they can shift. And oftentimes, if it's a very, very deep fear, if, it, if they feel like it's a very stuck place, uh, this process can take 
some, you know, in your human perception, it can take years and that's okay. You know, as long as the progress is forward, as long as the progress is evolution and not de-evolution into a darker, scarier place. So as long as it's pulling in moments of love, moments of peace, moments of harmony, this will help them shift because when you feel a, a moment of love, the soul, it helps awaken the soul to that energy. And so more of their soul becomes awakened to that energy of love. And so as much as you can send them the energy of love, the energy of peace, um, the most powerful that you can be is to find those frequencies within yourself and be the beacon of love and peace. Because with, when you feel that within yourself, you are sending that out into your reality and others are able to pick up on that, on that frequency. Uh, you might be surprised how much people feel your energy and connect with you if you are in a place of fear, if you are in a place of strife. Uh, they too, uh, humans are very social. And as social beings, they will harmonize uh, with the energy of those around them, uh, which is why when, pe when people are shifting to a place of higher love and higher frequency, frequently they will need to completely disconnect with those people that are choosing to stay in a lower frequency. Uh, because humans are so social, uh, if they choose to remain connected to that person who is choosing to be in a lower frequency, then it's more challenging for that individual to move to a higher place because the person who's choosing to be in a lower frequency is still pulling them into the lower frequency. So oftentimes you do need to, um, you know, leave behind those who are making different choices than you, you know, and you can choose to do that. But the most important thing is to be a beacon of love and peace yourself. And those who are in tune with you and who are within your reality, well, it will also help them to harmonize with those frequencies. And those who are deliberately choosing to stay in the lower energies, uh, sometimes, you know, ultimately it, that is their sole choice. You cannot exert your control or force them, of course. Uh, you can simply send them love. And as they feel that love, hopefully they will shift out of the darker, uh, more distorted energies into the energies of harmony. But ultimately, it is their choice. And you as an individual soul should not take the responsibilities of what others are choosing on their soul level because it is their journey and we are all sovereign. Um, and so part of it is simply becoming aware that you can still ascend, even though there are those who, who as you raise your vibration and frequency, um, may in your perception uh, fall away from your reality because they are deliberately choosing a lower frequency. So, um, Yes, there are many ways in which you can help them, but ultimately it is their choice. Thank you. Once more, such a beautiful detailed explanation. And it really brings into um, a clarification of how it is that we are always saying, send love, just send love. Um, thank you for going through almost a diagram of why it is that you want to send love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Anything else that you would like to communicate before we bring her forth into um, beginning the body scan? I would say there's an exercise that humans can do to help harmonize themselves with their highest selves. And it's a very simple exercise, but if they do it every time that they're feeling a distortion or in disharmony, uh, it will continue to help them align with their higher selves and that is simply this, whenever they're feeling uh, any type of energy, which you would say is in disharmony or a distortion and not their true perfect selves, 
uh, which of course is always in harmony, always in love, always in peace, they can visualize a light within their being and the power of that light driving out distortions and reharmonizing themselves with their perfect highest, highest self. Because this light within them, this knowingness, this awareness, this power within them is their highest self calling out to them, calling out to all the parts of their soul to align with their highest self, with the highest possibility. And so every time if you're out of alignment, you can simply call in your highest self and ask your highest self to send you that energy of harmony and alignment with the highest self. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, have I been speaking to the higher self aspect? Of yes, and her twin both together. Beautiful. Okay, very good. Well, we want to thank you for coming up very early on during the session. We honor you, love you, and respect you. Thank you for showing her this very important life. I know you shared a lot of wisdom um, with this future life of hers. Is there a specific reason and purpose why you wanted her to specifically see this life, please? Uh, yes, she's been wishing to see the future, the possibilities of what she's moving towards. Uh, it, it will give her hope in her what she perceives as her present. Uh, it will give her hope and it will give her something um, which will feel a little bit more real and solid to her to work towards and boost her confidence uh, in herself and in her abilities uh, because that future self exists uh, you know, in our perceived now from our perspective, it is actually real and so we, are simply connecting your present day with the energy of her future self so that she can call in that confidence, that hope, that knowingness, that knowledge that she has within her soul and within her, her being and within the role that she's chosen as a human. Thank you. Very good. At this time, Higher Self, we'd like to begin her body scan. Higher Self, would you like any assistance from any archangels or other benevolent beings to assist during the body scan? Yes. There's Archangel Raphael. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to ask the Aqualorians who have been working with on her healing to also come in. Okay. Archangel Raphael and the Aqualorians? Yes. Okay, beautiful. We call forth on Archangel Raphael, please. And we also call forth, connect us, higher self to the Aqualorians that she has been working with. We'd like to speak to all of them together now. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you for uh, assisting us today. We love you, honor you, and respect you. If we can please begin her body scan, looking to see what is inorganic within her that no longer, um, that is not hers. Scan for any negative energies, entities, technologies, anywhere, anything that you would like to start off with, with first in her body. Let me know where you find some. There's the energy within her solar plexus which she feels as a tension, which is not hers. Okay, let's scan her solar plexus now. And Raphael and Aqua, let me write that down. Aqua Lorians? Aqua Lorian. Uh -huh. Yes, if you all can just uh, go ahead and scan her and tell me what is within her stomach. Is that an energy, an entity, or a technology? There is some sort of technology, um, but it has given rise to her ongoing issue with um, stomach issues and her tendency towards um, stomach infections of parasite and the like, uh, which she has battled with through her life. And um, so she has the biological entities, but the, the source of the issue is the technological placement uh, is a technological energy, which does not belong to herself. Okay. The technological, you said entity is an entity? Um, what is it? It looks, it looks metallic, but it moves like it's a living thing. So okay. it's some is sort it, of, mm -hmm. it's some sort of very ancient technology. 
Okay. Um, so is it just technology that, that has a consciousness of sorts or is it a, a, um, related to any like archon entity? Um, the placement of it is generations back. It's very ancient technology. Um, mm. And it's because they follow who she is. Uh, mm -hmm. And the solar plexus is the seat of her power. Um, it was an attempt to limit her in her power. So would you call it the, a, the, a... The, the The technology itself does not have a consciousness beyond, you know, what the, this normal metallic, you know, of course the minerals have consciousness, but the item itself, the technology itself is not conscious. Um, however, as it's been there, you can picture it like a barnacle um, on a well. I mean, not that the well is a, a barnacle on a ship, let's say. Mm -hmm. So the ship is, you know, it's a ship, it's a metallic ship. Um, and then the barnacle holds onto it and uses the surface of the ship to start growing and developing itself. So originally, there's some sort of metallic object within her. Um, and then other entities have used the surface of that in order to develop and grow uh, in places within her being uh, in which they normally would not be able to. Um, but now they have this metallic anchor thing within her. Uh, and so uh, beings of conscious energy were able to attach to that thing and so it's, it's become like a host of a small population of you could call barnacles. Okay. Can we go ahead and encase that Raphael with the symbols now, all those barnacles, technology barnacles? Let me know when they're encased, please. Yes, they're ready. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and um, since they have no consciousness, let's go ahead and eradicate, transmute that technology out of her system, out of her stomach, please. Making sure that we encased all of them None of them are outside of the encasing and with the sacred alchemy, neutralizing, transmuting them out, please. Can we do that for her? Yes. Good, we're beginning the process now. Let's continue scanning her. Um, let's scan her for entities this time. Does she have any entities in her and um, where? Mm, you had one earlier as you were beginning the hypnosis on her. There was something trying to grab onto her throat. Uh, it's it doesn't seem present at this second, but every moment that it gets a chance, um, it jumps back in and then she sends it off and then it jumps back in. So that one keeps trying to control her throat chakra. Let's find the root to when this began, when it started trying, when it started to jump in. Oh, this is a generational thing. Um, she was taught from very young to not use her voice. Uh, in fact, as a child, she struggled learning to speak. Uh, this has been with her a very, very long time. Um, but she's gone through periods where she's been able to drive it out. Um, but every chance that it gets in a moment of, mm, if she even slightly moves into a lower, lower vibration, it jumps back on her. And she was, and she was specifically, um, this was deliberately also cultivated by her religion, which taught women to not speak. Uh, it was, it's a, oh yes, um, they're the ones who sent this into her. And they, they do likewise to other um, members of her church. But um, this was originating from them. Okay, so these entities are directly linked to the, her um, past religion of Mormon? Yes. Okay, um, yes. And then let's see. Oh, so what kind of entities are these, Raphael and um, Aqua Lorians? Can you see? What we can do. Yeah, it looks like some sort of, um, it looks like a vine that comes in and it's like a vine that like comes in and then tries to wrap around everything it can get. And so she keeps yanking it out. But yeah, if there's even like the tiniest little fraction of it left, it just like it, it, it grows, it grows back as quickly as possible. Um, and so she feels it, she senses it, and she's been throwing it back out, 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 out. But, um, you know, uh, it's there's still that little seed of it there. Okay. 
let so the, is this seed organic or inorganic entity it's it's an organic entity it is okay let's go ahead and contain it with the alchemy symbols now within her throat let me know when it's contained yeah okay thank you let's go ahead and find all the entities in her so we can contain them all in her sinuses it's a similar entity um up in that area because it's where the pineal pineal gland resides mm -hmm. uh that was a special focus of them and she has ongoing sinus issues mm -hmm. um because they're seated up in that area as well mm -hmm. okay let's go ahead and uh, contain those that similar entity there in her sinuses let me know when it's contained with the alchemy symbols yes it's ready good okay where else does she have entities at Let's contain them all so we can help. There's something which is, okay, on her ocular nerves, in her eyes, in her vision. Mm -hmm. And in fact, she does not have a uh, normal vision. And there is a control mechanism that is deliberately keeping her vision, her eyes from working together. Because if they can control her physical vision, um, because the physical is the projection of the soul uh, if they can control the physical and place limitations on it then they believe that they can limit the soul but of course once the soul sees it and discovers it we can remove it but there there is a mechanism which is hindering her physical vision okay just to clarify this mechanism does not have a consciousness to it no it's some sort of mechanical thing Okay, can we use uh, Phoenix Fire and start eradicating that within? Yes. Yes. Okay, we're transmuting that within her pituitary gland, her vision there, completely transmuting that out. As we continue to scan her, where else does she have entities at? Mm, the same creature was, which was controlling her throat was damaging her lungs and making mm. her feel like she could not breathe properly. Okay. Um, was because it would send its roots down. Mm -hmm. And we have our file start in the higher self start healing the the lungs for any damage it caused there. Yes. Thank you. Filling it in with love light now. And also her insides because of the lifelong grip that the solar plexus thing had within her. Um, it will. It's leaving behind some. In the process of removing it, it's left her area very raw. So she needs some healing there as well. Yes, please. If we can have um, Raphael start healing that area now, please, for her. Does she have any other um, residue or any other um, anything that needs to be healed from this vine type of entity anywhere else in her body? Mm, basically, everything which was attached to the throat was affected the sinuses, the lungs, the ears, um, everything which kind of branches out from the throat was being affected. So there is also some um, work in the ears which need to be done. Good, if we could begin that process now, we're sending Phoenix Fire to anywhere it caused damage at, and then we could have, please, Raphael and higher self fill in love light to anywhere it damaged, please, thank you. Okay, now um, let's, I wanna scan for specifically, does she have any entities like uh, reptilians, archons, entities of earthbound, any kinds within her? No, she did up until very recently. She did though. That's what she did some clearing work. She mm -hmm. didn't know what it was for um, this past November and December. And mm -hmm. her work, her work then was to transmute those energies so they are no longer within her beautiful thank you that is a, also such a wonderful example of how you were talking about how we can create this reality of removing some of these inorganics within our lives and within ourselves right yes she did that on her own beautiful thank you for guiding her through that now um i want to uh, just scan her as well her dna her spine making sure she doesn't have any negative fractals as we know, sometimes these entities can hide. So one last time, Raphael, Aqua Lurians, as well as higher self, making sure there's no other entities in her, including her DNA and her spine, any negative fractals. Let me know if you see anything. I wouldn't say entities. 
but her DNA is not yet uh, completely harmonized in its perfected state. It still needs some work. Her DNA needs some healing. So let's go ahead and start that process with the higher self's permission. Uh, Please. Yeah. Um, it seems that when the Archon energy was within her, it was manipulating her DNA. And although they left, it left some um, breaks within the DNA and which need to now be connected back. Thank you. If we could start that process for her now, organically healing her DNA, bringing it back to its organic formation, it is meant to be divinely for her highest path as her higher self allows. Also deprogramming any false programming within the DNA as well that no longer serves her for her highest good as the higher self allows. Continue doing that for her and overall just filling in her DNA, bringing it to its formation. It's meant to be divinely. Can we do that for her? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, very good. And then just Phoenix firing any part where any archons were removed, making sure that they didn't leave any residue back, please. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Now, let's see. Um, can you tell me these uh, vine type of entities? Are we able to speak to them? Uh, yes, we can speak to them. Let me put it in a bubble so that it won't okay. be able to grab her. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, we are connected. Thank you. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you for speaking to us. We love you, honor you, and respect you. May we ask you questions, please? Yes. Thank you. If you can explain to us, um, we have, um, I think this is the first time I've run into you, type of entities that, like a vine, I'm trying to understand where is it that you are located at? Mm. There's a very, very ancient planet that we're from. And we are brought from that planet and hidden within the earth. You're hidden within our Earth? Yes. Okay. But you came from an ancient planet, you said. Yes, we were brought here. How were you brought here to Earth? We traveled on the soles of shoes, what you would call shoes. We mm -hmm. traveled. We, we were carried. Somebody stepped in us and then carried us from planet to planet. Not all the planets were able to to maintain us and very small part of the earth is able to maintain us but we did find some place where we were able to get root mm -hmm. it was not an intentional act that we are brought here you would you would call us a contamination of course we are happy to be here we don't consider ourselves a contamination we are simply living our lives what type of environment were you able to say latch on and we're able to contain yourself within earth what is required for you to be able to mm. find a location like this? it needs to be very warm and moist mm -hmm. which is why we like her sciences which is why we like this soft warm moist tissue uh, mm -hmm. and same within the earth we like soft dark moist warm places and we were discovered, of course, because although we were brought here accidentally and nothing nefarious uh, in our coming here, of course, once we were here, we were discovered and utilized. It was with intent that we were used in humans. And um, what part of the earth are you at located at right now? Mm, it's tropical. The part of the earth that we were um would now be underwater um but at the time that it was not underwater it was very much like your uh, amazonian rainforest this this type of climate okay and the, through this space you're able to uh, reach out to beans and attach yourself how does this work how do you it was out? a no we can't we can only move through biological there has to be a biological path so either somebody steps in us and we contaminate them like a type of what they would perceive as parasite like i said we are simply living our lives so we can contaminate people and in that matter we are considered ancient parasites but what happens is is long years 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 ago when humans were first on the earth and they were on the land 
that was not yet drowned. We were discovered and we were cultivated. Uh, we had juices, not, not only that of control. And really, our intent is not to control. Our intent is simply to live. Um, but those who were planting us within others, of course, the intent was to control. But we, we need a biological bridge. So either we physically are touched by the human or by the entity that, that we contaminate, you know, or somehow seeded within them. Or in case, um, because there is no time, uh, those who were aware and able to access the fourth dimension of no time, of time, and see everything at once, they were able to see the genealogical lines and they seeded certain lines with us. And through this mechanism, uh, we have been within their biology, passed down from mother to baby to mother to baby, and so on through the biology. Um, there has to be that biological bridge. And that's why Amber's ancestors also were very susceptible to having their voices shut down by her religious organization and by society organization, not only religion, but the biological seed, wherever there was a physical biological attachment, also through the fathers to the woman and then to the baby, it can go, uh, it just needs that biological link and then we are able, we're a very, very tiny seed. You think of a seed like a plant, but we're not that big. It's more of a tiny, tiny little um, genome size, a tiny size of a DNA fragment. And that's the type of seed that we are. So we can, we're very tiny, so we can travel on those tiny biological fluids. And that's how we ended up within her body. And since she was weak as a baby and then, and then weak in her self-will and in her empowerment, we were able to get a stronger root within her than we are sometimes in others. Okay, thank you. Now, I understand that you're, you know, your ancient entity. And we are looking to assist entities like you who couldn't be seen as parasitic attaching to others, infringing upon them in um, several ways. We'd love to be able to assist you today so that you may spread your light and you can positively ascend, no longer having to play this negative polarized role. When the earth ascends and the universe ascends, entities like you who are parasitic will be neutralized to zero. Instead, we'd like to assist you to ascend and spread your light. Would you allow for us to do that? To I would you? like that. We have... We have other things that we can do. We don't have to be damaging. We can okay. be utilized in helpful ways as well. Wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and, and assist you all there. And if we can, uh, Raphael, herself, and Aqua Laurians, if you can focus on that. Are we able to focus on the entire grouping that is stuck within the location of Earth that no longer needs to be there? Are we able to focus on the entire nest of it or how can we do this? Yes, because it was so limited in its ability to migrate, uh, its scope is fairly small. It's more not, there is some spots patch within the earth itself, deep within the ocean. However, its existence is more as it described um, within the biological entities that it still exists okay so let's go ahead and find all those all that ex it exists within and um is it also in other people yes it is in some okay and if we could have Raphael ask those higher selves of those people that have this entity um if they will allow to remove this attachment to them yes um, beautiful it's incorporated itself in the DNA in places. And so that's what is calling itself a seed. But what it is, is a tiny mutation within the DNA that it's come in and become a mutation. 
And so, yes, we can certainly harmonize the DNA to its divine self and remove the mutations from within the humans. Good, as well as hers. Yes. DNA. Thank you. Okay, we're doing that using Phoenix Fire, Love Light, healing that mutation there within those DNAs as the higher cells allow it. And then let me know once all that, uh, let me know once this organism is, for example, positive polarized, all light within the waters of earth, as well as within the people. Let me know once they're all light. From our perspective, it is done. From perspective in her time frame, it will appear to take time to heal from its effects, but it is accomplished. It is done. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and um, help this bring it into, say, a collective consciousness, bring it together, no longer attached to anyone. And if we could call forth, can we call forth on Archangel Azrael who will guide this entity? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to speak to Archangel Azrael now, please. Yes. Brother, thank you. Thank you for um, assisting us today. We love you, honor you, and respect you. We have this organism that was a vine, but now is um, positive, polarized. Um, can you tell me, where is it that you're taking it? It mentioned that it has some, you know, positive potentials, not having to, you know, uh, go into people and do all that it was doing. We are taking it into the future. It has a use. It was showing um, it has mm -hmm. a use as a soil enrichment to grow. What it does is it creates a network within the soil to allow the consciousness of the soil to move through it and also to allow the soil to remain intact so that wash so that water and other other distress that would otherwise come to the soil and disrupt the soil, it holds the soil together. So it's a form of nutrition within the soil. And then of course the seeds of the plant life are then able to grow within the soil because this entity, this tiny little vine helps hold that soil together and the nutrients within the soil. And so it does have a positive aspect in helping the soil to be in a healthy state. The contamination happens in the original introduction of mutation of human DNA. Uh, this was one of the entities which was, it was deliberately introduced in, in as a mutation when the DNA was tampered with. Uh, this was introduced as a mutation. So as we are healing the DNA, and removing this mutation, it will no longer be an issue in the higher dimension in which we are now placing it because the humans there and the biological entities there are within harmony of their DNA. And so the risk potential of contamination is no longer there. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Azure, for assisting them there. Ensure their safe passageway. Blessings to all of you. May you be surrounded by the love light of the universe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And we're healing all parts of any damage that this entity caused within her. Please fill in a window of light. Thank you. Now, this technology that was within her uh, pituitary gland, her vision, is it completely removed? Yes. Good. Let's fill in love light there now, please healing the area. And then since we're working within her third eye, can we expand her third eye to the biggest it can be and activate her abilities as her higher self allows? Yes. Thank you. And Raphael, can you go ahead and just work on all her chakras while you're at it, please? Um, and higher self, and then open up her heart, expand it to the biggest it can be for her highest good, please? Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. Also, while you're doing that, Raphael, um, can you scan her org field and repair any any healing needed within it, any any tears or anything like that? Repair it, please. Yes. Okay, wonderful. The uh, higher self, does she need to be age regressed? No, she has done extensive work on this already. Good. Can we just send enough light to her cells? Yes, she needs to strengthen her connection to her divine blueprint. Good. Can we start doing that for her now, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then 
can we have uh, Raphael and uh, the Aqualorians and higher self? Does she have any negative cords attached to her scanner? I see something within her uterus, within her sacral chakra area. Okay. Who's connected to that cord there in her sacral? Uh, it's another, I would say religion, but not her Mormon religion. It's a long time from the religion of the patriarchy from you many years back. Her ancestors were other than Mormon. It's been there for a long time. But it's through this energy of religion and patriarchy. Can we remove any ties to any of that place for her? Yes. Good. Let's start that process now. And then, higher self, can you cut off the cord to her sacral now? Yes. Thank you. And let's start healing her sacral now. Also, while we're healing her sacral, can we completely ensure that we healed uh, any past trauma from her childhood, specifically, you know, as she was a, a young adult and as a child being uh, sexually abused, if we can ensure that she no longer has any type of residual energy of any kind harming her there. Yes, we are Thank doing you. it. Good. Let's scan her. Um, does she have any other negative course besides her sacral? Is she good? Um, on her crown chakra, mm -hmm. oh, the, again, from her religion, they had placed one there, which she has, for the most part, isolated and mitigated, mm -hmm. but there is still some energy pulling, being pulled in from that. Okay, can we cut that cord off now, please? Yes. Good. Thank you, and let's heal that space where it was at. Any other negative cords? No. Okay, thank you. Let's scan her for any negative implants, hooks or portals. Does she have any? No. Okay. And then scan her for any type of negative technologies or wires. Mm, there's something in the spine. Okay, what's within the spine? It's not going anywhere now, but it was connected to that cord that was on the crown chakra that the religion had mm. put in. But the wiring is still there. Okay, can we that transmute that? They wire out of there now please yes good any other negative technologies or wires mm -hmm. to her heart too which we're moving okay good using phoenix fire to any of those negative wires anywhere else no we've got the rest already thank you now okay we already scanned her for entities one last time any other entities within her no, but there's one in her friend that keeps trying to come at her. She's, she senses it, so she's been distancing herself from her friend, but has been trying to come. Okay. Um, and if she sets intentions of, say, not consenting, shielding when she wakes, um, and then before sundown, can, can we ensure that this entity no longer comes, tries to influence her again? Yes, she senses it when it tries and she shuts it off. So good. Very good. Yes. Okay, higher self. At this point, we've conducted her body scan. Anything else that we could could heal? And then also healing. She mentioned that in, um, in 2006, her, a lot of her sickness, fatigue, um, you know, chronic pain began. So we mm -hmm. want to make sure we heal any of that. What was causing that? Mm, she knows it was from the actually multiple. On a physical level, it was the vaccines and the toxins which were injected into her. But mm -hmm. on a on an energetic level, it was her allowing another person to dictate her life and handing over her power to that person. Uh, so it was multiple. It was both on an energetic disempowerment that she was participating in um, as well as the toxins from the vaccines. Mm, and her diet at the time was not very healthy. Mm -hmm. Her surroundings also were energetically not healthy and biologically not healthy. There was a lot going on. She worked at a medical clinic. There were molds and there were also, there was a lot of radiation and energy from medical equipment. There was chemicals that she worked with. Uh, there were, it was a very toxic environment for her on all levels. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Now, um, herself, are we complete with her body scan? Yes. 
Thank you. I want to thank Archangel Raphael, Higher Self, and the Aquilorians, Azure, anyone else who assisted today with her healing. We love you, honor you, and respect you. Thank you. Thank you. Higher Self, may I ask her questions now? Yes, please. Good. She says that she wants to know, what can you share with her about the Hiero Gamos relationships? What does that mean? In ourselves as source, we are in our source reality with our, within our individualized source self. And I are each other's polarities, are the polarities of the same soul. So we are the same creator soul. Hero Gamos is sim simply the, of course, we never were separate. We are always together. But the Hero Gamos process is the process of of opening the conscious awareness to the union of the soul, to the soul union. And so humans consider it a form of divine marriage, but it is simply coming into an awareness of the unity of the soul, of the soul relationship she has with her divine counterpart, with her masculine self. And so the process is a process. There is an awakening of ascension. And then within the ascension awakening, there are other awakenings of awareness. And this, you could say, awakening within an awakening within an awakening. She is awakening to the unity within her own soul, uh, to the divine marriage within her own soul. Uh, to the, her divine self as goddess and God in a divine relationship as source, as God. Thank you. Beautiful explanation. Okay, next question is, what was the soul learning of her experiences with masculine and feminine dynamics in this lifetime? We chose to experience extremes that were opposite to her true nature, or rather that were shadows of the highest timeline which she is choosing for herself she chose to explore the extremes so that she could you could say when you choose to explore the extremes of a situation you get the most learning out of that in that it shines a spotlight on that energy in order to create the highest potential out of that energy, you want to see the extremes of it. So you could say you shine like a spotlight. It's a very, very intense spotlight onto a situation and then it casts the brightest, darkest shadow because it's the brightest spotlight and then the darkest shadow. So the extremes of contrast you could say the very sharp contrast that such situation brings about so the sh darkest shadow also that allows the sharpest of light and since she was choosing to come into the bright brightest of light and choosing the highest timeline for herself in this timeline she wanted to examine the darkest shadow because they are each other's polarity. And so when you see into the darkest shadow, then you can also clarify the brightest of light. And she wanted to use this to be able to see what energy she clearly wanted to move into. And this is what she accomplished. And now she has the deep, bright appreciation of the intensity of the brightness of the love which she shares uh, within her soul. Oh, once more, beautiful. Thank you. Okay. And she says, how did her experience impact her relationship? With they were going through the experience together. The energy of her explorations were felt by him. And likewise, the explorations that he experienced of extremes in his relationship with the feminine were also felt by her both viewed themselves as completely separate from their divine counterpart, the, 
masculine felt very alone the feminine felt very alone each felt completely rejected by their other half so within the state of rejection within the state of perceived darkness they were able to explore the possibilities of of what it would be like if they were within those energies and so coming out of their explorations now they see themselves in their true reality as not separate but in unity as not hateful or rejecting or in a fearful energy fearing the masculine fearing the feminine fearing the loss that it would bring you if you allowed that energy into your life so rather than dwelling within those energies any longer now they are seeing the unity the harmony and having spent that time exploring the other paths that, that they could have taken now they're coming into a greater awareness of the bliss and the love energy of their union and so it did impact their relationship on both their parts uh, to spend some time in exploring their apparent separation their apparent rejection their apparent hateful attitude uh, because they are actually in very much in love and we are in that unity of love and so it was you could almost say fun for us to see what it to play around in the arena of what it might feel like if we were actually at odds if we did fight if we were you know in that type of energy so in a way it was interesting for us to explore something so opposite of our true nature so opposite of our true union so it was quite fascinating actually and we learned a lot from that exploration wonderful i think you answered next question then um okay and then she also know has said in 15 years he will merge with her and and her with him Please yes. clarify what this means and what that would look like. What is the purpose of this merging? Yes. So in a way, from the human perception, she still perceives herself as separate. She still perceives him as physically separate. But in reality, they are the same soul. We are the same. We are the same being who uh, are projecting ourselves into, at this time, to what is perceived as separate physical bodies one of masculine and one of feminine and so as the process of their union awakening moves forward they will each awaken more fully to their selves in union to the point that they will both no longer see themselves as a separate being as a separate entity but their soul will be so perfectly in harmony and so perfectly in union that that union of their soul and that awareness because truly they are in union even now is the perception and the awareness that is expanding and their expansion will continue until they are so fully aware of themselves in union that that will also be perceived by their physical selves so their physical self in the masculine form and then in their feminine form their entire soul in its entirety will you could say operate both physical bodies as if they're the same soul because in fact uh they are and so they the masculine and the feminine will be operating as the same soul no longer even in any perceived separation whatsoever operating completely from a perfect union of masculine feminine of complete harmony of their minds they will each completely perceive all the thoughts and all the awareness of the other uh, because as i said they are the same soul we are the same soul whatever she perceives he will perceive uh it will be very harmonious and it will feel natural because it is natural it is their 
their own soul, simply a full awareness of their soul being brought into their physical being. Thank you. Okay, she wants to know, there is a device invented which aids him in traveling the dimensions. How can she create this device and use it for herself? Please share any details. Yes, I can, uh, speaking here. Uh, I did make that device and I do intend for her to have it. Um, I do not wish to occupy the remainder of this particular hypnosis with the details of the wiring and the mechanics behind it and the powering. Uh, I want to assure her, however, that that will come because I do wish for her to utilize this device uh, for the time being, her focus is to be on developing her love for herself and harmonizing with her higher self uh, more than the intention of traveling the dimensions as I am presently doing uh, in your perceived present. Um, when it comes for her to more actively travel the dimensions and join me there, uh, I will bring those into her awareness and into her reality who know how to work with the wiring, who know how to work with the energy, and I will teach them how, and I will work with them and her. I will bring them together, and they will collaborate on this project, and I will manifest this project into your uh, physical reality for your for you people to be able to use, not just for it to use, but for others who choose to connect with the higher dimensions. This is a device that can be used by many, not just her. Uh, it can be used by any who chooses to tune their frequency and to connect with the higher dimensions and be able to access those for their higher learning and for pulling in the energy of their higher realities into their present physical realities uh, and so that is coming into reality for her but for the time being I ask that she please be patient and work on pulling in the love energy uh, and having the patience of traveling the dimensions via her meditations as she currently does uh, in her dream and in her deliberate conscious meditation uh, and that device will be coming to her shortly, but I'm not going to spend this particular hypnosis session uh, creating it for her. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for all that. Now she wants to know, um, she'd like to play music, but has a lack, have lacked the diligence to practice and learn an instrument. What advice do you have for her to learn? As she is experiencing with anything that she chooses is to learn, uh, as long as she can be in the energy of play, of fun, of enjoyment, uh, then this will help her to learn. The moment that she goes into an energy of forcing herself, of trying to control herself when she doesn't feel like doing something, uh, this is the energy that she should stay away from. Uh, as long as she feels like doing something, as, as long as it feels fun, and playful to her. These are the moments that she wants to pick up the instrument or, or her artwork or anything which she's seeking to learn or to develop. It's the moments of playfulness. And as long as that passion and playful energy is with her, she can do that. And the moment that it becomes tedious or boring or a chore, she should put that item down and move on to something which excites her playful, loving, passionate energy. She should remain in the energy of passion. She is working towards creating from a state of love and from her passion and from a place of playfulness and fun rather than a place of enslavement or chore or hard work and a tedious effort. She is leaving behind those energies of struggle and strife and enslaving herself and moving into a place of harmony and passion and love and creating from the heart. So above all, uh, follow the heart 
and do whatever her heart wishes. And when she's in the mood, then she should pick up her instrument and play and just simply enjoy it. And by this means, she will gain enough skill that it will feed into the playfulness and enjoyment and then create a cycle, a loop, a self-feeding loop of passion and energy and excitement. Wonderful. Does that go for as well for her incorporating her art skills to her spiritual life and evolution? Yes, it is the same. Her spiritual life is her passion. Her evolution is led by her heart and by her passion energy. So the same goes with her art. Pick it up, pick up her brushes when she feels that passion, when she's in the mood, when she feels excited about it. And the moment that it's feeling like a chore, like she's having to force herself, set it down and wait for another time till she's in the mood again of that passion and creative energy, because it is within the creative energy of love and excitement from where she went, wants to create her reality, not a force or control or manipulation. Thank you. I'm going through um, some of these questions she has, you have already answered. So I'm going through them. Next question is, why do I have, why does she have a strong connection to her life as a Indian princess? When could she learn from that life? Yes. Uh, in her life as, as the Indian princess, uh, she was working with, um, who was very connected with Krishna consciousness. And they did a lot of spiritual work together. And also her twin, who in that lifetime was Akbar, they did a lot of spiritual exploration and work together in studying consciousness, in studying meditation and the states of meditation that you can reach in order to tap into your creator ability. And so it was the states of awareness, the states of consciousness, uh, which she was pulling into this lifetime now. Uh, she was accessing the learning of how to how to travel the conscious awareness uh, that she explored in that lifetime as a, in India and pulling that energy and awareness into this lifetime as so simply she was learning she was pulling the energy of that learning from one lifetime into the other lifetime wonderful thank you she says she often wished she lived somewhere warmer and in a home constructed more you know in harmony with nature what would be the ideal location for her to live? And then if she wants to know where she currently resides, the best place for her to be at this time, or would it be better for her to actively work on relocating? She, she does prefer the warmer climate. And part of it is, has been her health struggles because her health was not balanced, because her, her nervous system was in a state of imbalance and has been for some time, that she feels easily cold. And she feels very much negatively affected by the weather, by the cold wind, which was affecting the sinus and the throat and the lungs, which, as you know, was being negatively affected by that entity. And so she was very sensitive to the cold. She's been very sensitive to it, uh, to the point of it was causing, causing her physical pain and discomfort. And as she heals now, she won't be so uncomfortable. So she does not need to be in a rush to physically relocate as her current situation in her life is conducive to her spending her time and efforts in her spiritual explorations. And so if she detracts from that and spends the time instead uh, looking for housing looking for to relocate, to move. Uh, suddenly she needs to suddenly uh, clear out all her closets and her drawers. And the major physical upheaval <laughs> that that would cause in her life would detract from her current spiritual work. Uh, and so we advise that she simply enjoy the place where she lives and understand that as she heals, she will be more comfortable even in cold weather. Uh, and for the future, we do have a more ideal location planned for her, which will be more suitable energetically for her. 
and aligned with the grids of the earth and aligned in many ways with herself and her soul mission. Uh, but that will come at a future time. For now, we simply say, enjoy the location that you're at. Enjoy the ease and comfort which you and your husband have achieved. And um, don't bring in, don't bring energies of upheaval into your life, uh, which are not necessary for you. You've reached a comfortable place. Enjoy the comfort. Enjoy the the abundance, enjoy the harmony which you've brought into your life. Uh, you don't need to deliberately introduce upheavals. Uh, you can go through the process of moving in a comfortable pace. You can start clearing out your stuff. You can start going through your drawers. Start sending away physical objects which you no longer are in harmony with. Start sending them out of your life. But you don't need to create the upheaval of a move in order to do that. You can do it at a gentle pace in harmony with your spiritual work. Very good, thank you. And she wants to know, where is her relationship with going? Is there anything in particular she needs to do or know to be working with him? Uh, yes, it's the similar theme that we're saying about her residence. We say it about her husband too. Uh, her relationship is shifting into a more harmonious one of friendship, of ease. Uh, why introduce disharmony where you know you prefer to move into a place of of ease and comfort? And so, as long as you both are shifting into a place of more comfort and harmony for each other, and you're helping him shift there, he's helping you be comfortable and be able to do your spiritual work, and he's as long as he's in harmony and happy with the situation rather than the distress and upheaval of leaving each other at this time, uh, feel free to continue the relationship as long as it is in harmony with each of you, as long as both of you are working towards a greater harmony and love in your lives, as long as it's a peaceful arrangement and nobody's feeling coerced nobody's feeling as long as it's moving to a state of love rather than discord then you can help each other move into a harmony of love that does not mean the type of love energy that is with your twin which is of a more romantic nature we understand that your relationship with your husband is of a different nature and has shifted of from more from a more romantic place into a more friendship place. And you can be accepting of this, be accepting of the place that you've shifted into and appreciate the relationship for what it is and let go of the notions of what you think that it should be, which causes you distress by thinking of what it should be. And simply both of you enjoy the relationship of what it is and appreciate the friendship with each other. Very good, thank you. And then she also know, please tell her about her relationship with her dog. Who are they to each other? Why did the, he endure the behavior issues and torments he had as a puppy? How can she help him? Yes, he's he came into her life to create that physical example of, how should we say, of physicalizing her empowered self and her awareness of the harm that toxins can do to the body, to the physical body, uh, she was aware with it, of it within herself. And she had dis disempowered herself by allowing uh, those toxins to be injected into her. Her dog came into her life in a similar situation in which she, again, was in a situation in which she allowed herself to be disempowered uh, by letting, by having somebody take away her dog and poison him, and he became also toxic. The physical toxins uh, affected his moods, his behaviors, and so the physical toxicity made his behavior also toxic. And so that was a very physical example of helping Amber understand that, yes, her sensing of these things was 
within her truth, it was true for her and something that she wanted to shift out of because it was so strongly toxic uh, within her reality. That was so, so it created an energy of repulsion, you could say, in order to push her soul more strongly forward into the direction that she did want to go. So you could say that he brought, he came into her life as a mechanism to push her soul forward more strongly into a reality that she did want to create of love, of health, of harmony, of purity, of being aware what energy is brought into the physical body uh, and shifting into a space of empowering uh, the self of, of being the one that's sovereign, of being the one who gets to choose. I want this energy within my being. I don't want this other energy because I don't want that energy of toxicity or whatever disharmony it is. Just choosing the reality in which she's harmonized with love and joy uh, instead of toxicity and poison. And so her dog helped her show that. Um, they, there is a soul relationship with them too. Uh, they are soul friends. And yes, they've worked together before. Him and the dog's soul family, not the dog himself, but a soul family of the same dog was her previous dog uh, previously, who also had aggression and delicate behavior issues. And uh, both times they were bringing in the energy of what she, of highlighting what she wanted to move away from to help her move into what her soul truly wanted for herself. Thank you. Okay. And she wants to know, why does she find herself being judgmental of others and where they're at in their lives? What can she learn from these feelings and how can she release the judgment and shift into a place of unconditional love? Oh, so I to understand, first of all, this word judgment, even this word judgment, she has a certain perception of it, which is left over from her belief system as a Mormon. Okay, the Mormon belief system taught that the natural soul discernment which you carry within you as source, as your connection to God, uh, that that natural discernment that is within you, that it is your own soul discernment, the Mormon church deliberately taught that word discernment um, and made it feel like that that natural discernment within her is judging others. Uh, and so what under the belief is that when she senses something within others, uh, like that entity within her friend, and therefore she was pushing her, that friend, she was keeping that friend at a distance a little bit because she was sensing that, she was discerning it, perceived it as being judgmental towards her friend. Her friend was in fact behaving jealously and was behaving under the influence of that entity which sensed and discerned that and so stepped away out of that energy um, because it's the energy that she doesn't want for her own reality. So she stepped away from the energy under her belief system felt like she was judging her friend. Whereas, um, really, it was discernment of the situation on a soul level, sensing the need to step away from a discordant energy, which she did not want to include in her reality. So just be aware that at times when you, when you think, when she thinks that she's being judgmental towards others, she is actually discerning something within them which is an energy which she does not wish to include in her reality. And so, of course, as a sovereign be being, she certainly has that right to step away from that discordant energy back into her higher self and back into her reality of love, of passion and joy, which she is creating. So simply understand that 
at times, uh, yes, some sometimes very rarely, rarely, she is judgmental, but that is the more rare case. More often, she is sensing something over there within her friend or within whoever, within uh, a video or within a movie or within whatever the situation is. Uh, she's perceiving a disharmonious energy. Um, so we would not really call that being judgmental. We would call it being discerning and understanding that that is a good thing for her soul. And she needs to cultivate an awareness of her own discernment and what is within the energy of her own being and her own higher self and what aligns with her heart. And this discernment, we would encourage you her to not try to push away from, but rather cultivate it uh, and then develop this heart energy. And then, of course, as she moves more within her heart, she will naturally harmonize with the energy of unconditional love. But simply we want her to understand that she is being discerning, not judgmental. Yes, thank you. That's exactly um, what we talk about, about how we're able to read situations, discern situations without having for them to be judgment. There's such a negative, say, um, archonic program upon that, making us feel like we're judging when we're not. So it's time for us to set ourselves free from that and become the sovereign beings that we are by being able to heart discern when we need to. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and she wants to know, when she was a child, she would feel someone in spirit holding and caressing her. Who was that? I think she knows already. She knows that it was, she just wanted him to confirm that because she felt so much love and so much tenderness from him. And it's what she feels from him now. She just wanted to have the reassurance from us that it was indeed him. And yes, he was also talking with her. And she was also talking on a soul-to-soul -soul level with him. Um, frequently she would, uh, it was how she navigated through her struggles of her childhood. Because as you know, her family was not necessarily of the same energy and harmony as her. And so would also often visit. And that gave her a, a connection to her own soul to help her along her journey. And yes, he was very much a friend to her back then uh, in that energy of friendship and love and as a guide and as a confidant. Beautiful, thank you. In this time and space, we've asked all her questions, higher self, is there anything else that we could have asked that we haven't? Yes, simply that, yes, she is letting go more and more of the concept of linear time. And whenever she is within the energy of love with uh, she feels that releasing even more. And so we invite her to not feel like she's wasting time when she is taking the time to meditate with him, to simply be in the energy of love with him, uh, because there is no such thing as wasting time, first of all. But also, mm, she is purposely shifting her life into the energy of that love and so what in her human perception, it seems like when she does that, that she is getting nothing else done and that she is wasting time. And we want to reassure her that if she moves into that energy of love, uh, yes, for the time being, it appears to be limiting from your human perspective, because when you're in that love energy, you're not physically doing something else. Uh, but we reassure you, the more you pull that love energy, the more it will enliven your physical activities and it will enable you to accomplish the things in the physical which you want to do in a frequency of love, in a crea creator energy of love. And so please don't feel like you're wasting time by taking the time every day and whenever you wish to, to lay down and be in that energy of love and to be in that harmony of love. Uh, we encourage you to do it often. Um, it is actually very beneficial for you on a soul level. 
And with time, you will see that it is actually beneficial for you on a physical level as well. And it will help you shift through this healing phase uh, much more quickly because it is shifting you into the energy of your highest self. And it is the highest self which holds the divine blueprints of perfect health and perfect uh, energy, being able to go about your day uh, not getting tired, not getting worn out, uh, having the capacity to do everything which you want to, to do. So we encourage you to stay in the energy of love as frequently as you wish to. Thank you. Beautiful. And this time, higher self, we've asked all her questions. We conducted all the healing. Are we ready to bring her back? Yes. Beautiful. It has been such a joy to connect to you and your infinite wisdom. Um, there's much shared within this session. I think that would help the collective. Would you allow for her to share it? I think it would really um, support so many in bridging them to overall the ascension and the majority of what you spoke of today. Yes, of course, understand that when you listen to a message, be it from me, uh, be it from anyone, uh, the guiding part should be your own heart because there might be messages which were true for and her life, which might not be true for you and your reality. So always allow your own heart to guide. Uh, there are a lot of truths in my message today, which are also for the collective. So we welcome you to send that message out and allow others to align their hearts with that which they will find uh, their own truth in, in what we have spoken today. Beautiful. Thank you. What an honor. We love you, honor you, thank you, and respect you, higher self, all the beautiful benevolent beings that assisted today and those beautiful vine entities. Um, blessings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will bring her back now. Greetings. It is such an honor to be here with you explaining what Galactic Soul History book series is about. I am Aurora. I am the founder of Aura Hypnosis Healing, which you will find here in our beautiful books. Book one. Every part of this book is divinely beautiful, beginning from the cover and the amount of wisdom and knowledge that is being shared. This book began by Aura Hypnosis Healing Technique by conducting past life regression on over 330 clients within the last three years, where they told their galactic history, their soul journeys, explaining who they were beyond the veil, beyond this earth, in the dimensions, in a universe. These different higher self expressions surprise me just as much as they're going to surprise you. You're going to start reading this book and you're going to want to learn more and more about these different expressions, not wanting to stop. Through these past life regressions, the clients were able to remember consciously what is within the subconscious as far as where it is that they've traveled throughout time and space, their souls have traveled, and they were able to share histories, histories of different dimensions, planets, and universe, and alternate worlds that brought forth pieces of the puzzle, pieces we had thought that we had forgotten. And through every self-expression that they share and these different past lives that they're sharing or future, we learn to be able to remember self because as we are all fractals of one another through this book, you will learn how even if a client is talking through a higher self perspective or some of the angelics are talking, you will learn how each one of those have messages even within your life as we are all expressions and reflections of one another. True history of the galactic history of the universe through all different forms of these higher self expressions, these different clients of throughout internationally throughout the world didn't know each other, but yet we're able to put this beautiful collaboration together. It goes through an infinite amount of how to self heal as well as things that are very sensitive as the my lab as how to weave through the artificial matrix and learning to come out from it into the organic matrix i am a 
channel to the galactics and we channeled furthermore information through this book as well you will remember your soul through other selves this in itself is infinitely beautiful because this is why we fractalize from source itself so that we can learn from one another sharing each other's journeys throughout our different incarnations so that we could grow together so this is what this book is all about sharing these beautiful infinite expressions that help you grow in the most profound ways gaining your sovereignty gaining your power back recalling memories long lost within perhaps your memory field activating your crystalline energies your crystalline bodies just as you will fall in love with each one of these different clients these beautiful souls in these soul journeys you will also learn to fall in love with yourself because you with every wisdom every knowledge gained through every single session that you will learn you will learn how to also self-heal within your etheric your energy body your physical body your infinite soul you will learn all these different things that we thought were not possible that you will learn that they are possible looking forward to meeting you perhaps in the future through whichever form whether that is on my youtube channel whether it is through any class or certification through a workshop through a seminar thank you for following your heart to mine i love you honor you and respect you thank you